You might remember my first video I made after the iPhone 12 came out about how to make your old iPhones look like the new 12 with a flat-edged case. Right after the release of the iPad Mini 6, I'm back again with another one of these where we cover two cases that are available for older iPad Mini models that replace those slippery rounded edges with flat edges and make your older iPad Mini look and feel like a new iPad Mini 6. In this video, we're looking at two brands of iPad case that will make your older iPad look and feel like a new iPad. We'll look at price, quality, perceived durability, any features, the packaging, as well as how good they feel overall. But first, let's take the iPad out of its old case. As you can see, at first the case was really good when it arrived. It has a foldable flap at the back as well as a hold for the Apple Pencil, but over time the, what these cases tend to do is they loosen up, and when you put the flap at the top, it actually overextends, it gets in the way, and generally inconvenient experience. Alright, now with the old rounded case out of the way, let's start with the new cases. The first case is the Tomovo. First of all, I noticed both of these cases came in thinner packaging than last time with the iPhone cases. Both of these are in thinner, cheaper feeling packages. That's fair enough because both of these are terrific cases and are simultaneously not expensive and cheaper even than the iPhone cases we previously covered. The Tomovo comes in at $9.95. If we start to get past the plastic packaging that has some information on which iPad models it's compatible with, as well as safety warnings, we're greeted with a pretty simple utilitarian case with a foam packaging, and that's pretty easily removable, as well as what seems like plastic films on the plasticky back with tabs to easily remove them from both sides. My first hunches are that this might be a fingerprint magnet, but as we'll see, it passes the flex test on the bottom so that when you touch the lip it doesn't flex too much, which is a great sign. Now, Apple's typical recommended way of installing cases is putting in the device camera first, and what we notice on the plasticky back is we actually have vents which are marketed as heat dissipation. So once we remove these plastic films, we can just simply grab a bar older iPad mini, put it in camera first, and then what we'll do after removing the internal film is peeling back the external film. After having played with one of the newer iPad Mini 6s, the first impression is that it's a night and day difference in terms of what difference the flat edges actually make. I'm kind of curious to see if this film serves any actual purpose, whether this plastic back is a fingerprint magnet. So what I'm doing here is trying to leave a series of fingerprints on the back and I can't really see it actually making, leaving any fingerprints on the case. So it seems like this film is just generally protective. Now if we take a look at the top here, we can see our camera cutout, microphone cutout, as well as one of the heat vent holes. The silicon bumper around the plastic backing feels a little harder than Apple's official silicon cases, but it's a night and day difference in terms of how it feels in the hand. At the bottom we have our cutouts for lightning as well as the speaker holes. On the sides, the volume buttons, which I found a bit mushy at first, but then they really start clicking if you start using the case, as well as our power button at the top. And overall this is just super satisfying, and pretty solid purchase for around $9. What I'm doing here is a quick flex test, so I'm trying to flex away the bumper and trying to see how it might behave over time. And as we can see, there's barely any flex to it. That's probably why the silicon bumper is a little harder than Apple's regular silicon cases. But I don't see this case flexing anytime, unless it's being put in and taken out of the case daily. Here what I'm doing is trying to see if I can actually leave any fingerprints on the inside or outside. And aside from light smudges, there's nothing really being left on this plastic backing but I can see how you might want to avoid touching it excessively because oils could build up here. Again, if you flip it over, it's not super noticeable. Next up, we have the Moco case. The Moco case comes in at $8.95. In the iPhone case video, I had a strong suspicion that they were actually from the same manufacturer and I have the same suspicion here, or at least I did. I'll save some time and say that these cases are virtually indistinguishable aside from very slight variations, including the camera cutout, the patterns on the sides, and that's pretty much it. They both have the heat dissipation holes in the four corners of the iPads, both are the same thickness, and both are made out of very similar materials, a harder silicon 
than Apple Silicon cases. I'll use this time instead to actually talk about some caveats with both of these cases. So you might see the iPad mini 5 case lying there and what functionality that adds is the ability to put the iPad on the side or stand it upside on a desk as well as possibly use a Bluetooth keyboard with it and something to hold the Apple Pencil. While these have nice flat edges like the new iPad mini 6 and similar camera cutouts, maybe some branding on the Moco case, you might actually want to look into investing into a separate stand and carry the Apple Pencil separately. And with my iPad mini 5 and with the 6, I'll be using the K380 Bluetooth Logitech keyboard, which I'll include a link to in the description as well. Aside from a slight color difference, both of these cases have the nice flat edges, slightly different bumper sizes on the four corners, the appropriate cutouts for the lightning port, as well as the speaker holes, both have an appropriate level of flex, which is close to none, which is a great sign because you won't have those lips flap around when you're trying to use your iPad, and the iPad won't slip out when you're trying to use it. Both have the appropriate microphone cutouts at the top for the two microphones for noise cancellation, and the Moco does have a slightly larger camera cutout, which is, to me, at least a non-issue. Once the iPad is inserted, we get that same satisfying feeling of using a flat-edged iPad, like the iPad Mini 6. Between the Moco and the Tomovo brands, both sets of buttons are a little mushy at first, but then once you press them a few times, they become nice and clickable. They both feel high quality, and they both pass the lip bending test, as well as the lip flex test. Both have similar levels of fingerprints, which is close to none on the plastic backing. The only question really is, do you want to save a buck for the more awkward camera cutout on the Moco, or do you want to spend an extra dollar and get a perfectly sized camera cutout? That's virtually the only difference between these two. With either case, you can't really go wrong either way. I'll include links on how to make your iPad mini 5 or older look and feel like an iPad mini 6 in the description below to both of these cases. If you found this useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe below. Thanks for tuning in.